Before you begin your installation, there are a few things that you'll want to check. Clear your base area of anything that might get in the way during assembly. This includes any overhanging bushes and branches. For this installation, we're installing onto a raised wooden framework to help protect the building from damp and insects. We would always recommend installing on a dry day with a minimum of two people. For this installation, you will need a screwdriver, a drill, a hammer, a tape measure, a ladder, and a standing knife or cutting tool. Start off by removing the transportation blocks from each of the panels. They're nailed in so give them a hard knock to remove them. Don't try to pry them off as you might damage the framing. It's best to get the doors fitted first so that you can make sure they're level. Line them up flush with the frame and place the hinges at the top, middle and bottom so they line up with the framing nails. Pre-drill through each of the screw holes to prevent the timber from splitting and then secure each hinge in place using the 30mm screws provided. Repeat this for all six hinges. Place the floor panel down onto your prepared base and make sure that the bearers are flush with the supports. Start the main body of the installation with the rear gable and one of the sides to form an L-shaped join. Align the panels at the corner so that the framing pieces are firmly against each other and the bottom framing sits flat on the edge of the floor. Make sure to pre-drill all screw holes throughout this installation. It can take time but will prevent unnecessary damage to the timber. Secure the panels at the top, middle and bottom of the framing with screws. You can now bring in the other side panel and repeat this for the corner framing. Secure the front in the same method, screwing at the top, middle and bottom of each side with 50mm screws. With all the walls up, it's time to work on the roof. Starting with the ridge bar, line an L bracket up with the end of the bar and pre-drill through each hole. Secure a bracket onto each end of the bar with 20mm screws and place it at the apex between the two gables, flush with the top of the framing. Screw through the bracket and secure it at each end. With the ridge bar installed, the next step is to prepare the roof boards. Place the panels flat on the ground. We found using an eaves frame to prop up one end made it much easier to secure the framing. Slide an eaves frame under the edge of the roof board, making sure it's flush at the end and sides. Secure each frame along the edge through the roof board with 30mm screws at each end and the middle. Slide the roof panel onto the gables until it reaches the ridge and secure in place through the board and into the framing below along each edge. This will create an overhang for your felt. Repeat this for the other panel. Now that the roof is on, you want to secure the framing of your building down to the floor to prevent any movement. Pre-drill and screw down into the framing at equal intervals using 50mm screws. With the felt, either measure the length of your roof with a tape measure, adding a few extra inches either end for overhang. Use a standing knife or cutting tool to cut the felt for a nice clean finish. For this building, you'll need two strips of equal length as well as the capping felt. Roll the felt out along the roof and position it so that you have at least two inch overhang on all sides. Tack the felt at the top two corners to prevent any movement and secure them all around, making sure that the felt is pulled firmly to prevent wrinkles. Repeat this for the other side of the roof and then roll out your capping felt. This should overlap your two pieces and can then be tacked along the length of the roof on either side. With the roof finished, it's time for the trims. Align the corner trims over the side panel framing and then secure in place at the top, middle and bottom with 30mm screws. Repeat this for all four corners before moving on to the fascia boards. Fold the felt down so that it is sandwiched firmly between the fascia and the edge of the roof. Secure these at each end and the middle and repeat for all four fascias. For the finial, make sure to pre-drill the screw holes to prevent splitting and position over the fascia joint. Secure a finial at each end with 40mm screws. With the windows, you're going to need to insert the plastic glazing strip onto the lip of the window. Place a piece of styrene in the window frame and cover the edge with the framing piece. Secure this through into the framing behind to sandwich the glazing in. Repeat this for the other window edge before securing both with the centre framing piece. The door blocks need to be placed on the top, middle and bottom of one door. This will become the slave door. Another block should be placed adjoining the centre block of the slave door, with all blocks being secured with 30mm screws through the front boarding. A turn button can be installed on the top and bottom blocks of the slave door. The door strips need to be placed over the door gap with the shorter strip at the top of the doors. 
Make sure they are flush at the top and bottom to leave a gap between them. Secure into the master door along each strip lining the screws with the internal framing. The last turn button is installed on the slave door between the two strips to prevent the door from swinging open with a black 30mm screw. Now that your shed is installed, you'll want to treat it with a good quality timber preservative to keep it protected throughout the year. Once you've done this, score around the edge of the window framing with a sharp knife on both the inside and outside of the window glazing. You should then be able to peel the protective plastic off the window. For more installations, please check out the other videos on our channel